Um, the importance about BuzzFeed is that, um, well, of course, we're a global media company, but you may have consumed our content or even shared a piece of content without knowing that it's come from us. And that's really what, what we're about. It's the power of, of sharing from peer to peer, but also the power of really great content creation. And we do that from an editorial standpoint, um, from a non-paid standpoint, and obviously from a branded standpoint as well. <coughs> So where we've evolved, um, we started in 2009, we've got the classic picture of the running basset hound, and it's what we've become synonymous with, it's with cats and kids and quizzes. Um, but as the business has evolved, so has our obsession with how people share. Um, what makes people share a, con a piece of content from peer to peer? And what happens to that content once it's shared? So what, what value is it then given if I share with my friends and my family and my work colleagues? Um, so we started looking at the various different ways people share and, and obviously the different, the, the different pieces of content that they share as well. So we've evolved from, from cats and dogs to um, the Obama selfie, so that was us. Um, we've also got um, world-breaking news journalists, um, senior correspondents, Pulitzer Prize winning um, writers, um, BAFTA winning and Oscar winning um, directors now working for us that are creating great pieces of content that can be shared. Um, across the internet. Um, and those categories are split now um, into many, many different versions of, of BuzzFeed. So we've obviously got the running basset hounds and the, the cute kids and the cats. Um, we've also got groundbreaking and award-winning news. Um, but also video. So video is hugely important to our content strategy as well. I'm going to talk to you about how brands have, have embraced, especially within your category, health and wellness, how brands have embraced video um, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a content creation tool and, and also as a way of reaching their target audience. Um, we have Global Presence. I run um, the UK, France, Germany, the rest of EMEA. Um, but we're expanding across into um, South America and also Asia as well. So what that means is that we have people on the ground creating content, shooting film, um, reporting on um, you know, breaking news. It's, it's not that we have an algorithm that's creating this content from a central source. We actually have real people on the ground creating content and distributing it across the social web. Um, <clears throat> so what's important about us, what is our secret source, is that we have a constant cycle of creation of distribution and also learning as well. And this is what makes a modern digital content creation company very, very unique like BuzzFeed. Um, we write, we distribute, um, it causes an impact, we learn, and then we reiterate and we write again. Depending on who has seen it, who has engaged with it, who has shared it, we constantly learn and, and evolve our content creation around you. Um, we don't drive people to our website, we send our content out to the social web. And the brands that partner with us um, also have the same amount of learnings and data and insights. So it's a constant cycle. So as I said, we employ the best talent, we create content, um, whether it's editorial or it's branded, those are the first two stacks, and we have a public-facing public brand. But the important bit is the bit in the middle, so that's our technology stack. And the technology stack is what makes this company really exciting and interesting and constantly evolving and growing. So from proprietary ad tech, we're a dashboard that we constantly seek and learn insights from the content that we create. Um, the custom integration that we have with social networks like Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. Um, and a constant um, evolution of machine learning and data science behind everything that we do. And that's resulted in huge amount of growth. So, you know, where we are now is standing over 3 billion content views, and we surpassed a billion content views on a weekly, uh, weekly basis last week. So, huge amounts of traffic growth. So, if I go back to this slide, our three pillars of how we create content, and I'll go through each one and why it's relevant to you guys. So, if we start with the art of creation, so why do people share the content that we create? Well, brands should learn from this whole sharing practice. 
The reason why we share a piece of content is because of emotion, and I'll take you through some of those emotions. The first one is identity. So this was a piece that we created for Otrami. Um, and again, we create everything that you see on the BuzzFeed stream or the BuzzFeed site. We don't distribute anyone else's content. Um, so these, this was a post that we did in the US, um, and it's called 70, 27 Thoughts That Will Cheer You Up When You're Sick. Um, it's a shame, I think this, this gif works, but this little rabbit doesn't think you, it's all very cute. Um, <clears throat> but as you can see from the comments, this cold has got me bad, but this made me feel a tiny bit better. Thanks, Dr. Um And you can see that again, what we do is we read and we analyze the comments associated with that, with that piece. And in this case, it was a really positive comment. And it was because this individual identified with the piece. It made them feel better. So it's that feeling, it's that emotion that will now probably enable them to, to share that and share that with other people that they would feel would identify with that post as well. So a huge success for Otrami. Again, this is um, uh, this was a quiz that we created for Zertec um, in the States. And it's a really innovative way of, again, expressing for people that suffer with allergies in a really fun way how they feel. So the hardest game of, of would you rather, this is the allergy edition, would you rather have no sense of smell or have taste buds on your fingers? <laughs> so 64 <of> said <laughs> they'd rather have no sense of smell. But again, you know, a very, very buzzfeed way of um, showing a really fun quiz, but again, it sort of allowed the brand to seamlessly integrate into something that was really innovative and very, very engaging in a great way. This theme is information, um, a more serious um, theme of cancer. So this was done for Cancer Research UK and had an incredible lift. So we judged everything, as I said earlier, on the, the, the power of the share. So it's not how many people have seen it, it's how many people have shared this piece. And I think this piece had an enormous amount of earned views, of shared views. Um, and this was an informative, uh, informative piece, so 18 facts that will change your perception of turning. And you can see um, the amazing amount of comments, and these were just, uh, just some of the comments that we received from this one piece. So again, really seamless um, sort of brand integration of a very informative piece of content. Um, and this takes me to um, distribution, which is again such an important, uh, you know, pivotal uh, part of what we do is to is to find our audience, not drive them to where they don't want to be. But again, this is a really disruptive method. It almost just completely makes sense now, bearing in mind that we spend most of our time on social networks. Um, I don't want to be taken away from what I'm doing, or the people who I'm talking to, or whomever I'm communicating with, or what I'm reading. So send me what I want to see where I am. And this is very much um, part of our, our, our business strategy. Content should meet people where they are already. I mean, this is no surprise now um, that, that nearly three quarters of the UK traffic is now on mobile. So we talked about the year of the mobile, maybe it will be next year, and believe me, it is now here. In the case of BuzzFeed, I think only about 10% of our traffic is derived from desktop. So everything that we do is mobile first, and also social first as well. So social is now, in terms of, of consumption in our day-to-day -day lives, it's what we do every day, day in, day out. And guess what? That's how, how we create our content, is for mobile and for social. So this is the dashboard that our journalists will see when they create, um, when they create an article. You will immediately see how it, uh, how it will appear on the smartphone. Again, this may seem quite cheesy, but it is, it is a, it's a very strong um, philosophy throughout the company. It runs through the day, DNA of everything that we do, and that is everything that we create should be measured by a real-world impact um, and what we can do to learn from it. And I'll take you, some, take you through some examples. So BuzzFeed Life is our life, healthy, um, health and, and beauty category. It was only launched about a year ago, and it's now doing over 50 million monthly uniques. It's growing, it's just, it's growing great guns, both here and in the US. And the overall theme with life is, again, it's real world impact. What can I do to make myself feel better? Where will I go? I'll go to BuzzFeed Life. So this is an example. We, we started um, what we call the BuzzFeed Clean Eating Challenge, and this was about a year ago, and since then we've done two or three iterations. So it's a really simple concept where we published um, a food list, shopping list, and then a number of recipes that ran over 14 days. Um, and this was the impact. So these are pictures taken from the BuzzFeed community. Um, 
both here and in the US. He had something, something like 21 million responses in the first couple of days. And these were people that, that embraced the challenge and then throughout the, the community felt that they could share and also be supported throughout the whole 14 days. Um, and then because of this great success, obviously, we, we, we run it. But against that, we also started um, a fitness challenge as well. So again, this was, this was done in the US about six months ago, and we've done similar challenges um, in the UK. But again, take Busby's 20, 28 day challenge, really simple, just videos and posts that ran once you subscribed every day. And the BuzzFeed community took it, embraced it, and went wild with their, with their various stories and posts. So key takeaways. Um, it's so important to connect um, with your consumers in the way that they connect with each other. So will your audience, will your consumers identify with the content that they see? Will they learn something from it? Um, and ultimately, will it make them feel something, whether it's a, it's a really powerful emotion of identity, information, or humor? Um, meet consumers where they already are, so within mobile, social, and video, and also have a positive impact on your readers and within your audience lives throughout what you do. That in healthcare and health and wellness, and certainly in the prescription and medicine area, this is quite a new discipline. So we need to understand how we harness it and what we do uh, in order to see the benefits. Um, these aren't the skills we grew up with. I look around the room, I see incredible successful comms people, marketing people, uh, you know, the likes of uh, Jason and Karen. These aren't the skills we grew up with. I spent over 12 years in pharmaceutical marketing, or the pharmaceutical sector, and social media, analytics, data visualization, search engine marketing, search engine optimization, they are not the core skills of the, the far more healthcare sector, marketing manager, comms manager. So thinking about what Kate said around uh, technology, talent, and data. I think we need to invest in our talent across the business. What are these skills? Train people. How do we harness them in order to provide more solutions to more relevant people more of the time? Uh, tech, it's the tech sector, SEO and SEM are seen as maybe a bit of a uh, kind of dark arts. You know, what do we do? Smoke and mirrors, how do we do it? Uh, so we need to cut through that. And then data, how do we try? We have two options, we do nothing, we sit on our hands, or we try and we learn from that. Uh, and the data that we get from publishing content and, and creating content. So I think the first thing to do is say that the challenge that Google had around educating healthcare, pharma, wellness sector, we have the same challenges, just with far less noughts at the end of the, the budget and the uh, programs. And this is critical um, because every single person with access to the World Wide Web does the same thing when they need information. Now, if that is a universal behavior of all of your customers, whether it be a carer, uh, a patient uh, per se, a healthcare professional, nurse, if this is the first step in all of their user journeys, what are we doing to harness that? Because for an industry that spends a tremendous amount of money on soft skills, in core quality, sales teams, health economic teams, to overlook this first step, is astonishing. And thinking about what Kate and Eileen have said, put content where your audiences are, move as fast as your consumer. I would say this is a responsibility for the industry and it's the bright minds of people in this room that can do that in healthcare, health and wellness. Uh, and an interesting statistic uh, for your procurement teams, uh, across a number of verticals including healthcare, 60% of global digital spend is wasted. That is from procurement, a procurement study, 60% of global healthcare spend is wasted. Uh, we ask the question, why build a website if no one can find it? And there is a, a profound opportunity. The disconnect for me is if we ask 90% of our, our partners, what does your search engine marketing or search engine strategy look like? It's a bit of a barren desert. So there's a huge opportunity and it's incredibly exciting. Um, the other piece I think to, to think about with search is the fact that we hear a lot as a group of agencies uh, working with a number of companies globally and in the UK that we're unique because we're patient centric. I don't doubt that every single person working in healthcare, I certainly think it's a real privilege. And I think individuals are patient centric. They recognize we need to do more, we need to help people. But one search on Google and 0.24 seconds giving you 25 million results shows you very quickly that we're not that patient centric. 
of the owners of these brands and the collectors are more data than anyone else, we're not actually providing useful information for people where they go. Uh, and we should be, because the opportunity is profound. In diabetes alone, last month in the UK, the UK, for diabetes symptoms, this exact query, there were just under 50,000 searches. Over a million, when we look globally, actually one and a half million. One month, diabetes symptoms, an exact match, semantic search. Uh, the first pharma company in the UK is on page seven. Uh, no one is ever gonna find that, nobody. And there's probably some really useful, valuable content or information in there. Uh, heart, heart attack symptoms, I think, uh, whether it be palpitations, ectopic beats, people get scared. A life event scares people. They want information, they want value. Uh, there are 12,500 searches every month in the UK, page four, first pharma company. Um, I'm talking very much pharma at the moment, a lot of these behaviours in health and wellness are the same in the wellness sector for our consumer health brands. If we go to the diametric end of the spectrum in terms of prevalence of disease, we look at multiple myeloma, uh, a hugely busy area at the moment in healthcare and pharma. Uh, even though the prevalence is far lower, there are still nearly 10,000 searches every single month in the UK. 10,000 people saying, help me. I've just been diagnosed with something that's terminal. I need to speak to my family, my friends, my children. I need to provision for finances. You own these drugs, please help me, you have a lot of data. So patient centricity for me, uh, maybe the new due diligence will be to provide that value and that information. And it's important because as you heard tonight from our uh, esteemed speakers, it's no longer about brands going into consumer space and saying here's our messaging. It's about consumers inviting brands in with a personalized experience and saying tailor it to me, make it current, make it relevant, and I will be an ambassador for your brand and I'll tell everyone about it. So. Um, for us, off the back of that, SEO, SEM, SEO certainly in an organic sense, is the foundation for all online comms, the biggest media employer globally. It's not a dark art, it's a science that many people work in. Um, you're doing this already in many ways. We think about some of the elements that will be part of an SEO strategy, an off-site SEO, link building, influencer marketing, community management. I imagine everybody in the room is engaged in those kind of projects and all those elements, those social signals, likes, shares, pins, views, can help enhance the authority of your brand. But if you don't have a strategy, you're missing all those opportunities. The premise of the promise of Search Unlimited is based around three simple components. We are healthcare experts. Um, Catherine's team globally, uh, Health Unlimited globally, has over 200 healthcare consultants based out of a number of locations, but predominantly here in London and New York. Uh, we understand nearly all therapy areas. Um, we understand healthcare professional and patient behaviour. A lovely thing earlier about search terms. Patients are highly unlikely to type in, I've got lower radiculopathy of the lumbar region. They say, my back hurts, I can't sleep. But doctors may use that, so we can start to understand who's doing what. What are people looking for to serve up relevant content? Um, so we are search specialists. We have a, a tremendous search team, and Arthur heads it up in our consumer division. We share those learnings. Uh, we have an exceptional technical team delivering some really strong results. Uh, but we understand healthcare. And maybe most importantly for me is we, we do and we will demystify search and digital. This does not have to be for techie geeks. The vernacular, the language we use should be simple so your medics, your legal team, your regulatory team can understand it. They understand their role in approving these programs and making sure they add value to patients. If it's a tick box, we're not doing it. So we use a simple language and we look at a transition of knowledge to make sure that people like the people in this room can implement SEO and SEM into the ops plan, into the LRP, into the brand plan. It becomes a process that you understand and you're not always reliant on agencies in order to help you do your thinking. Uh, and our commitment is in that training, we can help you ask all of your agency partners better questions so that you get leaner and meaner outputs. That's important, holding all agencies to better values. Um, so that's what we do. What are our services? Natural search. Um, I think uh, maybe a misunderstanding is we, you know, we don't do paid media in, in healthcare. Natural search we can do for both branded and disease awareness sites. You're not paying for any media there. You're adhering to Google's best practice guidelines. Optimising a site before any UK healthcare professional is self-certified. Are you a UK doctor? Tick. Are you sure? Yeah. Yes. Tick. So that's okay. We do. Paid search, uh, for all disease awareness campaigns, like you would if you were Nike, uh, you can do Google, pay per click, cost per click, to drive relevant traffic to your site. And our ambition is that people naturally looking for information, organically finding it, will stay longer on our website. For a paid campaign, dwell times are less. So our, our goal is to target 
so accurately that dwell times for paid media start to equal that of organic media. So disease awareness here in the middle is paid search. Um, and maybe the darling of growth areas at the moment is paid social. Uh, Facebook, I think we all know, has a tremendous targeting tool. Uh, and then finally for me, um, we, we ask ourselves three questions. Uh, firstly, are we current? Are we relevant? And finally, are we delivering an exceptional customer experience? And we should be maybe worried less about price wars and more about experience wars for our audiences. Because the things that you do can have a profound impact on patients. They should. There's a lot of money spent on things which are never seen, which is a real shame. So um, I guess the invitation from us to you is to the new user journey, maybe engage with Search Unlimited. Uh, we'd love to work with a number of you across a number of areas. And finally, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of our speakers. Uh, and thank you all very much for coming. <laughs>